Ross Lambrinidis is EU ambassador to the US and he joins me now uh, from Washington. Ambassador, <clears throat> I, I think that, I mean, we've now heard everybody say, you know, un unwavering support as long as it takes, whatever it takes. But the reality is there is still a gap between what Ukraine is asking militarily and what the allies are providing. Well, from the beginning of this war, uh, in some ways, there's been a gap. The Ukrainians have been uh, uh, predicting and looking on the ground what they would need. Uh, and the fact of the matter is they've received massive amounts of military support and economic support that has allowed them, even though not perfect up to now, to push back on the Russian aggression. The Russians are getting pummeled militarily. And that is uh, a, a, a combination of remarkable heroism of the Ukrainians and of the support they're getting from Europeans and Americans. So. And this support now has been announced to increase dramatically with much more advanced weapons as well. Um, I think Ukraine is in a good place to keep pushing Russia back. Uh, Putin expected uh, really the, the world when he attacked. He thought in a few days he would take over the country. He's been pushed back. Uh, he was convinced he would win the energy war against Europe. Uh, he's lost it uh, dramatically for him. Uh, he was convinced he was going to kill the spirit of the Ukrainian people by bombing their mm -hmm. infrastructure as he does now and uh, hoping that he will create right. a hell of a winter for them and he's failed or that he would send them over as migrants in europe and they would collapse there and he's failed i have no problem with the support we're offering to the ukrainian people it's strong and it's going to be even strong in the future do you worry from the eu's point that as the us now moves into a much more aggressive political cycle um that you know, obviously, there's already the conservatives who are demanding uh, more checks and balances on what's being sent. That Ukraine becomes got a bit of political football within the U.S. political system. I am not because I've been talking to Republicans and Democrats in the House every day. Uh, and I see a bipartisan commitment that is ironclad uh, now. Uh, but I do see and I do know that after a year of war, we are approaching now the, uh, the year mark, the one year mark. Um, you know, there could be people who say, I'm tired of this. This is bad news. I don't want to hear about it all the time. And I can tell you right now, this is exactly what Putin is betting on. He is trying to prove yeah. and his speech today in the Duma <laughs> makes it very clear that we are just a corrupt, uh, weak uh, uh, set of democracies, that we don't have the stomach like he does uh, to see violence through. Um, and he is hoping that he will see cracks in this alliance, whether in the U.S. or in Europe or in our relationship. And I assure you, I have not seen the slightest sign that he will win that bet. Uh, he will lose that one. Right. I, I'm pretty sure about this the same way he's lost every other one up to now. Other issues that are on the EU-U.S. agenda, and since we have you, sir, um, the Inflation Reduction Act. The, slightly took the Europeans by surprise and arguably creates an unlevel playing field in terms of sustainability, technology and investment. Now, the EU is coming back with its own proposals, uh, which I believe, as I understand it, when you come up with them, you believe will level the field again. Well, the, 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 there are two or three things that we're discussing with our American friends as we speak in a special task force we've set up. The one thing is uh, the implementation of the Inflation Reduction Act in a way that does not discriminate against the biggest allies, economic allies of the U.S., uh, the, the Europeans. The second thing is transparency in the uh, subsidies that both Americans and Europeans will be giving for the huge economic transformation that our economies need, the green transition so that we avoid subsidy wars. Uh, the last thing that we need is that. Mm -hmm. The third thing is the realization that, frankly, although we in Europe would like to, uh, to onsource uh, everything that we can, and you in the uh, US uh, would like to do this as well, uh, the fact of the matter is that we can't, and we, economically speaking, we probably shouldn't. So the question really is, in the next few years, who will we be importing from? Who are going to be our supply chains? Who are going to be our allies? And I submit to you, Americans and Europeans are the biggest supply chain in the world, always have been. Our economies are the two biggest free open economies in the world. Right. They always so, will be. But, and that's where we should be. And the sort of tensions that we saw in the last administration, 
which have clearly been unwound again. But there is still always the issue with, you know, I, I mean, President Biden himself has admitted European leaders turn around and say, yes, but what happens if? Well, I think, and maybe the war in Ukraine has been an inflection point for that as well, uh, that uh, whatever it is that we consider to be huge issues in the past, um, uh, dwarf in comparison to the strength of this alliance when we go to the future. And we realize this now. It is the strength of our economies that have brought the Russian economy uh, and its possibility to grow in the future to its knees. It's the strength of our economies uh, collectively, Americans and Europeans, that has made sure now that Putin is making half the money he was before the war from selling energy to the world. That is a huge hit to his economy. It's the third of our economies, frankly, that is allow allowing Ukraine today to be able to uh, function right. as a country just as Russia is trying to bomb it down. So I am not concerned about the future of the transatlantic partnership. We will always have to work on, on, on differences. But what unites us, uh, boy, oh boy, uh, it doesn't even compare to what divides us. Ambassador, uh, thank you. I think it might be the first time we've, we've had a chance to chat to you on Questmeans Business, or at least you and I have. Let's, let's make I it an agreement. I, I, was about, I was just about to say, let's at least agree <laughs> it won't be the last one, Ambassador. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Questmeans Business tonight. A